It's all about asset allocation, and I think <laughs> when I experienced it for, for the first time, much different to the days prior to the financial crisis, people have a clear view of their asset allocation, which they want to realize over the investment period. Um, I assume that you are your generous 500 million. I would leverage them by 60 to 40, um, uh, which, which gets me a little bit above the one billion you are, you are speaking about. Um, I assume your first time in this market. I assume you're quite an experienced investor in the market you're coming from. Very generous of you. That's just a feeling I got from you. Um, and uh, I would probably um, uh, concentrate on the three main sectors in a first chunk of three quarters of the total investment. So let's assume 750 to 800 million. Um, I would spread them um, equally to um, office, retail, and uh, residential, if I have the asset and property management capabilities inside. This is another uh, aspect that I need to manage. I would probably, as I said equally, take the retail uh, part a little bit lower and look at it very specifically. The last 250 to 300 million, um, I would invest in logistics, in special investment real estate, in hotels, um, and probably also in um, nursery home um, capabilities. By that, having a well-diversified portfolio in terms of quality. But I would also do that in terms of location. I would probably start in the big seven with the first half of the portfolio and spread it to secondary places with the second half of the portfolio. So I end up with a portfolio which is invested three quarters, let's call it thirds to make it simple, third, 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 residential, retail, office, and the last quarter in, uh, the, other pl uh, in, in, in the more specialized real estate sectors and one half in the big seven, the second half in um, the other secondary places. I would leave out the Bad Langenars of this world. And that's my portfolio, which I would like to do an IPO with, if, if you still have the confidence in me later on. Very good. Very thorough. Um, Didier. Uh, difficult, but um, I would probably leverage it the same way to reach the uh, billion or something. And same thing, actually, I would go 50% uh, on the uh, big seven and 50% on the uh, smaller, small towns. Not the small, small, but the, uh, the part of the 40. And um, I would go, uh, actually, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't take too much risk on retail. Go for prime retail uh, with a bit of potential, but I would really uh, aim at good quality retail, good location. Um, with a real ability to improve or to relate or wouldn't take the risk on that and uh, also because of what you said about internet retail uh, which is a real question so I would rather choose uh, uh, in-town retail uh, than outside, outside, outside of town and uh, I would go big time on um, office buildings um, uh, taking some risk sometimes on the location going into very good secondary locations where uh, we can see that uh, maybe the, the good location is expanding a little bit. Uh, so that, yeah, that would be uh, the big part of the portfolio, really uh, office, retail, going 50-50 on big, uh, big seven and the rest of the towns. And um, residential, I can't say I'm not a residential guy, so uh, I wouldn't take a risk. You would leave that alone? Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you for your confidence. but. Um, I think that a chunk of one billion is uh, something that just give, doesn't give the right impression where to invest in, because you end up with a situation that you have a very big uh, portfolio that is spread all over uh, different areas and different uh, types of and, uh, different segments. So I would generously give back uh, 250 million to you and say I would uh, take the 250 and leverage in the same way like my colleagues did. And uh, because this is more something they can really be focused on and what are the right places to invest in from my point of view. And then I would uh, divide it and, and invest it in office in, in these residential, uh, in these in this regional prosperous areas. Um, I wouldn't add the top five, top seven, because 
the yields and the the, uh, the rental situation in these areas, from my point of view, doesn't doesn't show the the return or uh, the situation that you as a uh, as a core investor who wants security, but on the other side, a decent yield, um, it doesn't reflect in the in the top top five or top seven markets. So I would go in there, and, and I would also add uh, the uh, would go office and retail in these areas, and I would also add student housing or healthcare. These are the three segments that I would go for, and I would do it in these regional areas and not in B locations in the top seven. Great, thank you. Marcus. It's okay. First, I'd say it's very brave to give a researcher such a lot of money. <laughs> As we predicted cor correctly, five out of the last three recessions, so it might be a very good investment strategy to give it to a researcher. So, <laughs> so after then leveraging it up as a little bit like 50% or whatever, so I would say actually I would go about a third of it to the to the top five, top seven markets, but... Maybe not the, the typical core product, it's more on the value add core plus or broken core or whatever you might name these kind of uh, product where you have to do some asset management on the things. Because there, there I think you still are able to get some of the returns you require. The rest, the two thirds of the, the, the rest of the money I would invest in, in some of the, the prosperous areas, regional cities, going for office, for retail and, and especially for residential. But uh, on the residential side, more looking for existing stock than for project developments, given uh, that you want to have a stable and, and secure cash flow return without any kind of downward uh, risk on it. I would more go for existing stock than for new developments. Great.